Hey, it's Mr. Lineski with uh, Unit 4, Section 2. We are now going to start proving triangles are congruent. Uh, there's five ways we can prove triangles congruent. Today we're going to look at two of those ways. Um, they are known as side, 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 or SSS, and uh, side, angle, side, um, or SAS, or SAS. Uh, so, we're going to first take a look at what exactly does it mean when I say two triangles are congruent. Um, so, I've given you here a little statement that just says triangle CAT is congruent to triangle DOG. Anytime you are given two congruent triangles, I highly recommend that you take this statement here and you stack it. Triangle DOG, so stack them. Um, the idea is that when we look at this, each of these parts match with one another. So in other words, D gets matched with C, O gets matched with A, G gets matched with T. So always stack them the way to kind of understand which parts match with what. So when I say D matches with C, that just means that angle C is going to be congruent to angle D. And so we kind of mark the angles as congruent. That also means that angle O is congruent to angle A. Now, I'm going to use double marks here to indicate the difference between this angle and that angle. Because if I just keep using one of these, then it all kind of looks the same. And then finally, I would say angle G is congruent to angle T. And so we'll use three little marks there. And so that just means when I say the triangles are congruent, that means all of their parts are congruent. So those parts consist of the angles and the sides. And so again, I could say something like angle C is congruent to angle D. I could say angle A is congruent to angle O. Angle T is congruent to angle G. But with any triangle, we have the angles and we have the sides. And so we can also say that the sides are congruent. So if you take a look at how the letters line up, it's DO and then CA. So that means side DO is congruent to side CA. And so we can say CA is congruent to DO. And notice again, my parts still match up. C to D, A to O. Um, I could say something like OG is congruent to AT. And then finally, I could say that C to T is congruent to D to G. So C, T, D, G. Notice I'm differentiating between one mark, two marks, three marks. And so what was that last one? C, T is congruent to um, D, G. So anytime I say two triangles are congruent, there are always six congruency statements I can pull from that. I can say the three angles are congruent. I can say the three sides are congruent. Okay, um, there's something that kind of falls through from that, which is called the third angles theorem. And it just states that if two triangle, or I'm sorry, if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angle must also be congruent. In other words, that's saying if this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle, by default, because these add up to 180 degrees, so let's just say that you know this was 90 and this was 40, that means this is 90 and this is 40, by default, these two angles have to be the same thing. And that's what the third um, angle's theorem kind of states there. OK, so our first way of proving that triangles are congruent is called side, side, side. And basically what that says is if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, uh, then we can say that the triangles are congruent. So in other words, in this example here, if I said that side AB was congruent to side DE, if I said that side AC was congruent to side DF, and if I said that side BC was congruent to side EF, so this, 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 if I can say, hey, all three sides end up being congruent, then we can say that triangle 
ABC is congruent to triangle, and again, match up the parts, is equal, uh, congruent, excuse me, to triangle DEF. And the reason is by side-side-side congruency, or side-side-side congruence theorem. So here's an example now where it gets a little bit more challenging. Maybe it's not always going to be two triangles that are separated. And so you kind of look at this and say, well, how would I prove these two triangles congruent? And then write yourself a little congruency statement. Um, so notice here, I know that QD um, and AU are congruent to each other, and QU and uh, AD are congruent to each other. But notice how this, they're pushed up against each other. This is something called a shared side. And the shared side is often referred to as the reflexive property. The reflexive property is any time you say something is congruent to itself. So notice, like, if I ignore all this, this triangle has side UD. And if I cover up this, this triangle also has side UD. And so I can say that that's a shared side. And so I can say something like UD is congruent to UD. Um, and that would be because if I was doing a proof, which we will be in a moment, that would be the reflexive property. So a hint that you should always um, do when you're looking at these problems is look for a shared side. And a shared side is always going to be um, the reflexive property. And so now I can say, oh, these two triangles are congruent because of side, side, side. And so if I were to write a congruency statement, I would say something like triangle D, Q, U is congruent to, and notice the pattern that I went in. So I went D to Q, so I went the one line to the two line. So now when I go to write my next triangle, I'm going to go the one line to the two line. And so that would be to triangle U, um, a, D. And so if I stack those again, I can kind of see which angles would end up being congruent. I'm not going to do this section for you because I believe in my heart of hearts that you can all do this, but I would like you to mark on these figures where the shared sides are. Okay, I'll show you. It's here, it's here, and it's here. So always look for those shared sides. Shared sides are always when the triangles are pressed up against each other. So I could always say that these are congruent, this is congruent to itself, and that's congruent to itself. All right, moving on, we have side, 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 or I'm sorry, side, angle, side, SAS. Um, what this says is if two sides and one included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. And so for this, I would want to say something along the lines of if side AB is congruent to side EF, or no, I'm sorry, not EF, ED. So BA and ED are congruent. And then let's say that angle A is congruent to angle D. And so now if this is side angle side, we have to go in that order. So I wouldn't want to put a side here because I'm kind of skipping over a side and skipping over an angle. Um, and so we're going to use this side here. So notice it said the included angle. Included angle just means the angle that is sort of created by the two sides meeting. Um, and so the last bit here would be that side AC is congruent to side DF. And so therefore, if, if all of that checks out, I could say, okay, this is side, angle, side. And so I would say that triangle BAC is congruent to triangle, and again, match the parts, EDF. And that would be by side, angle, side. So now again, the problems are never going to just be these two triangles separated. We're typically going to see something like this. And so how would I prove these two triangles congruent? So notice, I'm given that AC is congruent to EC. Um, so I have one side. And I'm given BC is congruent to DC, given two sides. And now I can't just be like, oh, the third sides are congruent. That doesn't make sense. There's no rule that says that. 
And so we say, okay, we need to look for an angle somewhere. Where can I get an angle that's congruent? And then we remember our stuff from unit one and go, oh, these are vertical angles. And so we could say, well, angle A, C, B is congruent to angle, whoops, uh, angle D, C, E. And the reason for that is vertical angles. And so therefore we would be able to say that triangle um, A, let's just say A, B, C is congruent to triangle um, E, C, or no, sorry, E, D, C. Notice I'm struggling here with the, uh, the matching. So the reason that I kind of was a bit hesitant there was if you look at this congruency statement, A matches up with E. So it kind of, are, they're sort of in opposite corners here. So again, just make sure that the parts actually match up. B matches with D, and C is congruent to itself. So the reason for that would be side angle side. So my hint for this, for side angle side, is to always look for vertical, um, whoops, to look for vertical angles, because those are always going to be congruent. All right, and finally now, proofs. So we kind of were giving you the steps and babying you a little bit um, when we did the proofs with the different angles. Now we're going to just sort of see full-fledged proofs where you have to create the statements and you have to create the reasons. Um, and so what we're going to do here is kind of go through a strategy on how to prove triangles congruent um, with sort of a, th I call it a three-star uh, property here. Um, and so we are given that AC is congruent to AB. So always mark your figure. AC is congruent to AB. That was given to me. So let's go ahead and write that down. Oh, was I nice and did this? I was. Sweet. Given. Anytime you see a congruency statement, go ahead and put a star next to that. The goal here, we're kind of playing Blue's Clues. When I get three stars, I can prove a triangle congruent because I always need kind of three parts. I either need side, side, side or side, angle, side. So right now we have one of the sides congruent. Awesome. So what else are we given? We are given that D is the midpoint of um, BC. And so D is midpoint of BC. So that too was given to me. So what does it mean that D is the midpoint? Well, if D is the midpoint of BC, that means it cuts BC in half, which means this piece is equal to this piece or congruent to that piece. So that would be my next step to say, well, BD is going to be congruent to CD. Hey, a congruency statement, a star, woohoo! So why can I say that? Why was I able to break that in half? That's because of the definition of midpoint. Midpoint tells me, cut it in half. And so now, where can I get my third thing? Oh yeah, I have that shared side business. Always mark your figure. Use the figure to your advantage. So here's what that looks like. I would say something along the lines of AD is congruent to AD. It's congruent to itself. It's a shared side and so we refer to that as reflexive property. That's our third clue guys. We just figured out Blue's Clues. So we have our three stars. Once I have three stars that means my figure should be marked. And so the hint that I always tell my students to figure out which congruency statement it is, is to kind of ignore one of the triangles and just look at what do you have marked in one triangle. You have a side, a side, and a side. So we would then say for our final step that triangle ADC is congruent to triangle ADB. And my reason for that would be side, 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 congruency. All right, that is it for side, 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 and side, angle, side. Thank you for watching. I know it, and now you know it.